What's up YouTube, Oliver here. In today's video, we're going to be having a look at two apps, uh, MyNode and Things. Um, these are two separate apps. They're made by different developers, but they are um, linked. There is there is ways that they integrate with each other. Um, and I do think they have a very similar uh, UI. The kind of the design language feels very similar between the two. So I thought it might be nice to do them both in one video. Um, so Things is a um, organization app. It, it allows you to create to-do lists and sort of manage your tasks, group things into projects uh, and so on. And it's a really great way of managing all of the jobs that you have to do. MindNode is a mind mapping application and it uh, basically allows you to create all sorts of nice uh, mind maps. Um, there's all sorts of different themes and templates, lots of advanced options. It also has a really nice quick entry tool and one of the features is that it allows you to create to-do lists within mind maps and those to-do lists can then be exported uh, into projects and things um, so they do have quite close integration um, okay well well let's have a look okay so this is mind node this is the application that you presented with when you you click on the icon there's multiple ways of creating a new mind map so you can either create it using the canvas in the application or you can use the uh, quick start menu. So let's firstly have a look at how you do it directly through the application interface. So you first you presented with a central node and you can give that a name. Let's just call it mind map. And basically, if you want to create a new um, branch off that, if you hit enter, it creates a branch. Okay, so here's an example branch. Hello, YouTube. If you want to create um, a sibling we press the enter key and what that does it creates a branch at the same level um, and we can just put something here and if we want to create a child you hit the tab key and it creates a child and then again say you want to create another sibling you can hit the enter key and so on and that's how it works and so you can create as many branches as you want so it's those two keys the enter key and the tab key that you'll probably use the most and you can then create lots of mind maps you can have as many uh, main nodes as you want as well if you right click and click on new main node and um, just give that a title you can have as many of those as you want within the same canvas um, so let's have a look at some of the options that we have here so when you have the formatting um, sidebar enabled you can choose various different things so you can choose whether you want it to be a line you can also choose to have say a pill which is like a kind of oval almost um, instead of it just going to a line for a branch you can choose the colors that you want here um, you know you can specify the size of the the width of the line you can choose different borders and again choose your border styles you've got your branch styles um, which uh, again you've got this kind of slider here which will adjust the thickness of the line and you can choose the colors you can choose whether you want a dashed line and all that sort of thing uh, obviously you've got your font options and colors down here and then your branch can be angular if you prefer them to be like straight lines or rounded if you prefer them to be more curved and then you can also choose to have a manual layout so by default you get an automatic layout um, and it'll be laid out just in order when you create a new um, child or sibling you can have them horizontally or vertically um, however you prefer to do it but if you choose manual layout what that does is it lets you just grab the branches and put them anywhere if you have auto layout on they'll automatically just snap in to that place you can't actually move them around um, so that's something worth pointing out but I do quite like the auto layout because it comes in really useful especially when you use the quick entry um, you can also add notes, so say I want to come here and I want to add a note, you just click on the notes, you can just type any information in there and it saves it. Um, and within these you can add tasks, you can add stickers and you can add images. So if you click on there, basically it just turns it into a task that you can check off. Um, stickers, you can choose like a little icon, so for example you might want to use that motorboard there. Um, and you can also insert an image by clicking on that. If you want to connect two nodes together, um, so say I want to connect number two here down to this Hello YouTube. So if we select them both and you then come here where it says uh, to connect two nodes, it then draws this line. So what that does is it allows you to 
um, kind of have the two things linked together and you can sort of, you know, if you're making a big mind map and there were certain points that were kind of linked to each other, you can show that with an arrow. The other option that you get up here is um, about folding of the current section. So if we go to this um, node here, because it has two children, you can then fold in the child nodes in case, for example, you might have a really complicated mind map and you want to just simplify it all down. You can do it like that. Now, the other way of creating a new mind map is by going over to the quick entry, which will appear in your menu bar. And all you need to simply do is just type in and you can use the tab in the enter and it creates a bulleted list of what you want to actually appear in the mind map. So I'll quickly demonstrate that now. Okay, so I've just quickly typed a few things in here. So you can see that I've got Hello YouTube is going to be the main node. And within those, there's going to be four different child nodes. And then within apps, it's got another two child nodes. And then things has a child node um, of Hello World. So when, obviously, it'll automatically do this out. So I click Create Mind Map. And one thing I should note beforehand, you can use Enter and Tab here to create the indent. And then you can use these buttons. You can also add tasks by using this um, task button. And you can add notes and that kind of thing. So if we go to create mind map, it opens up another window here. And as you can see, it has created for us our different uh, branches and automatically done that, which is really handy. Now, because this is tabbed, we can drag them into the same window here. Um, we can view those uh, together like that, which is a nice way to have a look at it. Um, and basically, that is, for me, the, the quick entry tool is such a useful function because it takes all of the kind of hassle out of making the mind map look really nice and spending ages having to think about the layout as you're typing it. You just focus on getting in the content that you want and it generates a really nice looking mind map. And if we want to create some tasks, um, all we need to do is let's click on a few things here and add tasks to them. And then it just lets you check things off. And uh, we'll come back to this in a moment because you can then export those tasks into things. But just before we do that, um, just to give you an idea of what uh, a massive mind map could actually look like, um, here is something from a lecture that I wrote. These are This is how I like to keep my notes as a university student. I find this really useful. I like the way it's laid out. You can have so much information because these canvases are basically infinitely sized. Uh, they're, they're really, really good. You can also press Command F and that brings up the search. You can type, you know, something specific in there. Um, and if you hit enter, it then finds it in the mind map. So it is a, it is a really useful way of presenting your notes. Um, and I, I prefer doing it this way instead of just having like written pages. For me, this is much more visual. And it's all done automatically just with the quick entry tool. Okay, so let, let's go back to the tasks that I was talking about before. Um, so here you've got three different um, items. The way it works is whatever the document name is, that becomes the project title in things. So if we click on the little share sheet, um, and you can share it to all these different um, platforms. But if we go to export to things three, um, this comes up and it just explains what it's going to do and it creates uh, a new project and basically it does this so it generates it's called mind map 3 it's put hello YouTube because that was the title of the the main node and it's put testing videos topics which are the three child nodes so very useful um, way of being able to organize that and then you can obviously check these off and so on we'll come back to things in just a moment but that that's why i do like the two applications and i thought i'd put them into one video because they're so closely integrated in that respect um, that you could really nicely use them together um just one final note about my node before we move on to things as you check these off it does update the, this kind of like ring here, which shows visually the completion level of each task. Really nice feature. Um, and there is an iPad app, which you can download. If you use this um, for free, you'll get a trial and then it becomes a viewer only. Um, what we'll do is we'll have a quick look at the iPad app now. It, it's very similar, um, but there are uh, slight, some slightly different, the features are used in a slightly different way.
Okay, so let's just have a quick look at the iPad app. I just wanted to show you this because I actually really do like the iPad app as well. I think it's just the, the design that they've used is really ingenious. I think there's just some really clever features. So um, firstly, you get presented with this screen when you first launch the app, which is just like an iCloud Drive screen where you can search for you know, a file that you want to open, plus would create a new mind map. And of course, you can also do your quick um, entry by clicking on that little lightning bolt symbol. Um, so, uh, if I just open up a mind map to show you, so what you can see here is you have on the top left hand corner you've got some different symbols. So the first one on the left, the four squares, takes you back to your file view. And then obviously you've got your share option there where you can share it through different things. You can also export it to things. You can view an outline, which is a lovely way of viewing notes at a glance. You can type in the search field if you want to search for something in particular. You can also change the size of the box. You can't move it around as far as I'm aware. But it's really nice that you can uh, view it in that way. You know, in my opinion, it just works really well. Um, and, and I just like how there's all these little cards. It's, it's very kind of Apple design language, as I've said before. And then you can also um, there's a little bar in the corner there that just basically hides and shows the uh, menu at the bottom. So if we want to go ahead and make some changes, we tap on something and then it'll select it like that. You can click on the plus to create uh, like a child node coming off it. You can also drag this box up here and your style options come up, a bit like on the desktop version where you can choose your shapes, you can choose all your text format and your layouts. And I just think it's a really lovely design for an iPad app. I mean, all the features are pretty much the same as the desktop version, but I absolutely love the iPad version as well because it's just got such clever design features. It's one of the, my favorite things about the whole app because there are lots of mind map applications out there. The design features are so clever and so nifty and they're very Apple. And that's one of the things I just love about it the most. And then. Of course, you can go to edit things, you can fold nodes, there are your different options there. You can add um, like an icon there, you can enter notes, and that would add a child node or a sibling node. So it's so easy to actually work with this. Um, I'm not going to go into loads of detail because it's very similar to the desktop version, but I just I really wanted to show you how nice the iPad version actually is. Okay, so let's have a look at things. We'll start at the top. So inbox, uh, if you get any tasks sent to you, they would appear there. Uh, today view this is one of my favorite things to use because it shows you calendar uh, information here along with all of the tasks that you've got scheduled to complete on the current day. I find that so useful because you can make it down into a really small window, um, you know, and just put that at the corner of your screen. And it just is really, really useful, um, you know, and it's a really nice way of being able to organize all of your work. Um, and just have it very minimal. But let's just open it back out again. And you can just click on the little scroll and it makes the sidebar appear on the little scroll handle. Um, and then you've got upcoming, which is another view that I like to look at because it shows me for quite a while um, what's on my calendar. And also it'll show any tasks on a specific day because these are recurring tasks, which I'll talk about in a moment. It shows them as that sort of circular arrow. Um, anytime which are things that don't have a specific deadline. Uh, we've got someday, which again, you can say, well, it's not any time, but it doesn't need to be done specifically. Logbook is anything that you've checked off, so it shows you like specifically which you, on, on what days, what you know, the tasks that you've done and all that kind of thing. Trash, if you delete something, it'll appear there and then you can empty the trash. So it's not gonna delete them straight away, but by moving them to the trash, it gets them out of your sidebar and it also doesn't affect the overall um, percentage completion of your project and that kind of thing. So this is a project here. You create a new project um, and what that happens is it gives you a blank document. You, you type in the title, you can give a description, you create headings and then within the headings you create new to-dos. And basically within these to-dos, if we double click, you can add specific notes. You can also use the calendar view. You can say today, this evening, someday, or choose a specific date. You can also add a reminder. So if you want it to remind you at a certain time, let's just clear that. You can add tags. You can also have a checklist within it. So, you know, um, do this. 
and then it gives you a little checklist. And you can also specify a deadline um, and basically say if I put tomorrow, it'll tell me that there's one day left and you can just delete that like so. Have as many headings as you want and then within those headings you have all of your tasks. Click on the three little dots you get the options to archive, move and remove. And basically the when you uh, complete any of these to do's as you can see the little circle up here um, you know as I'm checking them off is getting bigger because it shows on a I suppose you could say like a pie chart um, the percentage completion of each of the whole project and then as you can see in the sidebar here um, you, when you have all of your projects at a glance you can see how much you've done of each one and um, you can also create groups which allow you to have multiple projects under one sort of area and if you click on the main kind of area heading it'll show your deadlines for each project and that kind of thing and then you can go into a project within that and then here I've got like a deadline set up and what I really do like is it tells you how many days left there are for each deadline really really handy feature it's so useful to be able to quickly at a glance see how many days there are until something's due in you can add description you can create headings and then within those as before you can set up reminders and you can set up uh, tasks and what these are because they're recurring reminders for example main body and conclusion if I come into this it tells me it's going to repeat it daily because I've chosen and to repeat something you just right click on it to do um, and then choose to repeat it because I've got something else selected uh, and it would, it would allow you to repeat um, a specific task if I come in here though and we choose you can change it and then it gives you the option however, however many days when you want it to start and finish you can add reminders so it gives you notifications you can add deadlines and all that kind of thing so yeah you can kind of view your later items and your logged items um, and that's basically how it works you've got your kind of footer here which allows you to create new to do's um, new headings and all that kind of thing so it, it is it is a really nice tool uh, and the way it syncs, I should point this out, is it uses something called Things Cloud. It doesn't use iCloud Drive. Um, it has positives because it means it's not using up your iCloud Drive storage and that kind of thing. But then it is yet another account you have to sign up to. Then you've got to sign in on all your devices when you first get it set up. And it, it just is a little kind of extra step. Um, but, I mean, they must have their reasons for doing it. Now, Things does have an iPhone and an iPad app, but another thing worth mentioning is that the iPad and iPhone app is not a universal iOS app. You've got to buy each one separately, and they're not the cheapest. I think they're around about like £10 per app, so if you're going to buy the Mac app, the iPhone, and the iPad, it is going to set you back you know, a fair bit of money. Well, I hope this video has been useful and I've answered all your questions. I'll leave all the links you need in the video description. Many thanks to the developers of both MindNode and Things for helping to make this video possible. If you have any questions, please leave a comment and I'll do my best to respond. If you like the video, please thumbs it up. And if you want to see more videos like this coming soon, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and bye for now.